We're always busy here at Kids Connection, and this week is no exception. We head over to the Dixie Stampede, one of our favorite shows, but we take you behind the scenes a little bit and learn what goes into putting on this amazing dinner show. In addition, we get some information about Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. If you live in the Branson area, hopefully you've taken advantage of this incredible program that Dolly Parton sponsors. Be sure to stay tuned to get some more information. Then we head over to a brand new attraction here in Branson. We go over to Fritz. We take you inside on our Junior Explorers Club and the kids tell you everything you'd ever want to know about this incredible $10 million new attraction in Branson. Welcome to this week's Kids Connection. Now it's time for one of our most popular segments. I'm going to teach you another magic trick. This trick, every single one of you can learn to do at home with a little practice. So I hope you enjoy this week's magic lesson. What do you think, buddy? Should we teach them another card trick they can do? Everybody wants to learn card tricks, don't they? Yeah. Everywhere we go, people ask me to do a card trick, do a card trick. So I'm going to teach you a fun one that you can do. If you can grab an envelope and a piece of paper, you can do this at anybody's house with anybody's cards. But we're going to do it right now using an envelope that we put a question mark on because I made a prediction. I know which card Xander's going to end up with before he even knows. We're just going to set it right there so everybody can watch it. Now here we have a deck of cards and we can mix them up all we want. It's better if you have your friend mix it. Go ahead buddy, we're going to make some piles here, make a few piles. You can do that, put some on the top, pick up some and mix them up. Come on, make them, make them all mixed up for me, all right? So you can do some more if you want. You can let them mix as much as you want, okay? Then you even let them go ahead and straighten them up. Go ahead, make them nice and neat. Now remember, I predicted what card my friend would pick. It's right here in this envelope, right? No one's touched the envelope, have they, buddy? No, you just tell them to keep their eyes on the envelope. You pick it up, flip it over, pull out the paper. It says the nine of spades. Xander, you see that top card? Will you just flip it over for me? Just the top one, just the top one. No, not all of them, buddy. Just the top one. Watch. Nine of spades. It matches. We did magic. <gasps> Xander and I will now teach you how to do the card prediction trick. What you need is an envelope, a piece of paper, and a deck of cards. That's it. You can do this trick anywhere. The secret is I write down the name of a card, put it in the envelope. It's really in there. But underneath the envelope, I have the card that matches my prediction. So I keep that together as I show this. I just hold it underneath. I can show it, I set it down. Usually I set it on the edge of the table so I can pick up the card easily. They can mix up the deck of cards all they want, make a mess, whatever they want. Have them straighten it up. Then you pick up the envelope with the card underneath it and just put it on top. So I'm just setting that card right down on top. They don't know it's under there. Set it down. You talk for a minute about the envelopes been on the table. You pick up the envelope. You pull out your prediction, which was the nine of spades. You then flip over the top card. Better yet, let them flip it over if they don't flip over all of them. They pick up just the top one, turn it over, and you say, look, you stopped on the same card that I predicted ahead of time. You mix them up as much as you want, but you found the same card.
You will fool your friends with this one, and it's so easy to do. Just grab yourself an envelope, piece of paper, deck of cards, steal off one card, hide it under the envelope, let them shuffle it, put it on top. Pretty easy. And what I would do is if you repeat this, maybe have a couple different ones, but you know the rule in magic, never repeat tricks for the same people over and over again. So Xander and I are having fun teaching you magic tricks. I hope you are having fun learning them. This is Xander. This is Christopher. Thanks for watching and keep practicing. You did get it. Great job. Thumbs up. Welcome back to Kids Connection with Christopher James, and today we are at the amazing Dixie Stampede. Yes, sir. One of my kids' favorite things to do in town. We have to come at least once or twice a month, and we're here with Nick. Now, Nick, I understand you're the production manager? Yes, sir. Okay. You have somebody trying to get in the shot there. That's right. And you've been here for how long? I have been here for almost, well, going on 10 years now. 10 years? Yes, sir. 10 years. Now, uh, what was your first job when you came out to Dixie? Uh, my first job was basically a rider. I got hired mm -hmm. on just to ride, and then from there I progressed from writing to doing more acts to dancing and mm -hmm. now I've done about everything in the show so Skeeter. it's... Skeeter? Do you get to do Skeeter? No, I didn't get to do Skeeter. I was this close. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I someday. Wasn't, I someday. wasn't tall enough, I think. You're not tall enough. <laughs> but you do some really amazing trick riding in the show. And uh, which one, which trick ride is your favorite? Uh, trick ride, I like to do Roman ride for the, uh -huh. the, this is where I stand on the two horses. And I love that just because when you go through the door, the wow factor that the audience gets from you, yeah. and then you get the fire added in it. And I mean, it's just, to me, that is one of my favorite Yeah. Runs. How in the world do you train for that? You just get up on two horses? or Well, you got to find two horses that are teachable. Right. And then once you get the teachable personality, then you just go with practice makes perfect. And you just mm -hmm. keep going and going. And then you add a different element every day, fire, and then you add the hoop. and. And slow and steady. Wins slow the race. and steady. That's right. Yeah. So you do uh, the Roman ride. Do you do? Uh, I like the uh, the one with the uh, wagons. I forget what it's called. The race, the figure eight. Oh, um, uh, the buckboard. Buckboard race. Is yes, that what sir. it is? Yeah. That seems like incredibly dangerous to me. It can be. Yeah. That's why we take a lot of time on practicing that as well. Yeah. So I'm curious about that. So uh, during the day when you don't have shows, and you guys have a ton of shows out here. I mean, yes, you're sir. Always packed every single time oh, on yeah. here. So when do you get time to rehearse? Uh, usually we have a couple slow seasons and then that's when we do our rehearsing is when we first open. It's kind of slower. Mm -hmm. When we do one and two shows, we have a little time frame of doing it there. Right. But besides that, once we pick up into our Christmas show in our main season, our busy seasons, we can do up to five shows a day. So we yeah. want to give the horses as much as a break as we possibly can. Sure. So that's when we don't do rehearsals. So now, when the horses aren't performing... I mean, do they take them out? Uh, do you have some place they can they go out and no, uh, exercise? Or? Well, we do exercise them. We have a, our arena. We take them out there and we exercise them at least once a week. And we got 27 on staff here, mm -hmm. horse wise. And so 27 it takes. 27 horses? Here? Yes, sir. That is we got a lot 27. Of horses. Yeah. And it takes us about a week to get through them all to turn them all out and exercise them. So right. that's oh, their. That's where uh, they get to play. This guy likes attention. Yeah, is this he yours? Does. No, this is Nico. This is the uh, the host of the show's horse. Oh, well, he he's, is. He's a star. He is huge. <laughs> I don't know much about horses. I'll be honest, I've never even been on a horse. So <laughs> this is as close as I think I've ever been, <laughs> other than watching them in the show. But, right. But my kids, as I say, they love coming out here. They love coming out for the pre-show. They're all about doing the stampede where they're kicking their legs and all that stuff. But I've been down in the arena. Um, an odd thing happened one day. I was here at the show, and they asked me to come down when you had the, the people riding the little stick horses. Yes, sir. And I'm down there. They picked me to ride it, and two people from our show on the showboat were actually uh, part of your show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gretchen Gerlach and a couple other people. But, um, so I do the little thing, and then we had to run up to them. You know, the girls on the horses, and she yep. said, what are you doing? Why are you down here in the <laughs> arena? But it's tough to perform down there. And what I like about your arena is even though you have all the dust and everything going mm -hmm. on, like, you don't even notice it. Like, yep. when you're sitting in the crowd eating. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we actually have a very strict schedule on how we maintain our arena. Mm -hmm. Like, from watering it every day to dragging it every day and just for the safety of the horses and the performers we have to right. do a lot of maintenance yeah. on that side of it how many people do you see 
How many people do I see? Do, do you seat in here? Seat? How many people? Oh, that's a tough one. I think it's 1,100. 1,100. Yes, sir. And every time I've ever come, it's like packed. For the most part, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> we, we fill them out. Yeah. Now, um, some of the other parts you have in the show that I find really fun are the, the pig races. Yep. And that's always good. I forget what that's called. Pork the chop. Pork chop downs. Pork chop downs. And then you used to have ostrich. Yes, sir, we did. Ostriches. Yep. And did you get to ride those? No, I didn't. I was. I came in the year after they told the guys to quit riding them. Okay. <laughs> so then it became a strictly girl race. Okay. They're a little bit lighter than us, I guess. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's hilarious. So every, what I like about Dixie is every year they mix it up a little bit and add new things. And the big thing this year that I noticed, I'm sure there's other things, uh, is the amazing screen that you have. Oh yeah, in the background that changes everything. Yeah, like, it, I mean we can put lighting. whatever we want up there, and it just kind of sets you into a better mm -hmm. theme and a better atmosphere. Yeah, it feels like you're actually outside. That's when right. You, when you have some of that at the beginning, you have the moon that goes across. Yep. And, uh, it's you have to come and see this screen. I mean, it must have cost hundreds of dollars. I oh, bet. at least a hundred. <laughs> at least a hundred dollars. No, seriously, you have to come and see it. My kids couldn't stop watching it. They're watching when the lightning storm was going on and and all of that. So um, everyone should come out to the Dixie Stampede. This is fall, but you guys run pretty much all year long, right? Yes, Take sir. some time off probably in the winter. Yeah, we shut down, I think, January 1st this year mm -hmm. is when we shut down, and we open up February 27th, wow, I that's think. that's pretty early. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We shut down, give the horses a break, give us time to <laughs> uh, clean some stuff up and get right back at it. Uh-huh. So real quick though, the Roman ride is one of your favorite things to do. Yes, sir. What other ones do you do in the show? I can do anything from the beginning to the end, basically. Mm -hmm. um, my second favorite other than is Skeeter. other than Skeeter and the MC. Yeah. But my second favorite thing is the trick riding where you fall off the horse with style and then land back in the saddle. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I, I would do the falling off part, but probably not the getting on. Well, so, that's, the, that's where the style comes in. It, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm lacking. But, well, thanks very much for talking with us. You're welcome. And uh, we're going to show you some more here at the Dixie Stampede right after these messages. If you've ever been to the Dixie Stampede, you've heard of Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. Well, in this next segment, we're going to get you even more information so that you can find out how you can take advantage of this fantastic program, thanks to Dolly's charitable work with her businesses. Well, we are back at the Dixie Stampede, and I am out here with John Richardson. Yes, sir. What is your title, sir? I'm the Director of Marketing. Director of Marketing. So he's the one that puts together all of the great commercials and everything. Right, so and right. ride none of the horses. None of them. Yeah, this is a huge horse. I was talking about that a few minutes ago. But have you ever been on the horses here? Uh, not the horses here. I've done very simple trail rides, and horses and I don't get along that well. So I leave <laughs> no, it to the pros. Yes, well, I would think that would be best. But this guy just wants to be in the shot. Uh, so tell me about this program that they have here at the Dixie Stampede. Every show that we're here, they get some kids down. They have them do the uh, chicken running. The chicken chase. Chicken chase thing, which I always just want to do that myself. But at the end, they talk about Dolly's Imagination Library. Imagination Library, right. Well, tell us all about it. Well, Imagination Library was Dolly's concept, and she mm -hmm. felt very strongly that all of her businesses should give back to the communities where they operate. And uh, we're no exception. Right. So after the chicken chase, we tell the audience about her program called Imagination Library. And Imagination Library provides free books to preschoolers in our community. In fact, every preschooler in the community is eligible and enrolled in the program at no cost to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, we remind folks at the end of the chicken chase that all kids are winners and that in order that they have a bright future, uh, we're going to provide them the books that they need to build a love of reading. Right. So every month from birth until age five, they'll receive a book that's age specific by mail. And uh, Dolly's picked some of them out herself. And mm -hmm. she has a blue ribbon panel of educators that pick out the others that are appropriate. Uh, and the idea is that every child has ownership in those books. They don't have to share them with their brothers and sisters. Right. There is no income requirement that dictates whether or not they receive books. Every kid is eligible. And the idea is that if they build a love of reading at an early age, before they start preschool, really, mm -hmm. uh, then they will uh, enjoy reading throughout their life and it'll change everything about their life. Right, and it works. It really does. Because we got our twins, I have twins, we got them signed up 
uh, years ago, and they're four years old now, and they get those books all the time. And so we built uh, a little library in one of their rooms just awesome. for these books. And so we call it their imagination library in there. And so they have them all up on the wall, and then we, because we have two twins, they come in pairs, uh, we donate the other one to their preschool. But how do kids get signed up for this? You said every well, kid is eligible. In so fact, how do they, uh, get on the list? they can go to imaginationlibrary.com or mm -hmm. they can come to Dixie Stampede and uh, we'll give them the enrollment form. Or you can also find a brochure on Imagination Library in, uh, at the OB ward, at the hospital, at preschools, oh, at wow. uh, uh, so pediatricians' no offices. No, we're, we're trying to reach the whole community as much as we can. Right. And programs like this that allow families that may not be aware of Imagination Library so that they know that those, uh, those preschool age kids can mm -hmm. get their books. Yeah, well it must be awfully expensive supplying. Do you know how many kids in the area get the books? Uh, there's about the 2,500 kids in the Stone and Taney County area. It's a lot of books. And uh, the program costs about $25 per student, or per, I'm sorry, per child mm -hmm. per year. So mm -hmm. do the math there. Yeah. And Dixie Stampede pays for all of those books in Stone and Taney County. Oh, wow. And although the, the program is in 6,000 communities across the U.S. and Canada, England, mm -hmm. and Australia. Really? So it's really a matter of funding where uh, in, in Springfield, Missouri, just up the road, United mm -hmm. Way has the program. So mm -hmm. it, it really is a good program, a great way to give back in a meaningful way to our community. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and books are so important. Absolutely. You, know, you see so many kids just playing video games now. But every night we set the kids down and we read them one of the books. And it's a great program. You should all come out. Of course, I recommend that you get enrolled by coming out to Dixie Stampede. Well, absolutely. Uh, right. Come out and see the show. Maybe we can get him on a horse. Yeah, not, not think? likely. I oh, think I'll uh, stand aside and watch the pros. You'll be on that Roman ride in no time. I'm yeah, sure. well, I, I'm not sure I'm that brave. Okay, well, thank you very much for talking with us. Thanks for having and us. And we will be right back with Kids Connection. Welcome to this week's Kids Connection Explorers Club. I'm Christopher James. Sanner. And I'm Cassie, the beautiful one and the smart one. <laughs> what? I'm the beautiful one and the smart one. Smart one and new. You're the new one? Where did you come from? The showboat lesson boat. Oh, from the showboat. And I come from my favorite daddy. Oh, well, maybe we should practice these ahead of time, although yep. that's really nice. Anyways, welcome to this week's Kids Connection Explorers Club. This week, we are taking you to Fritz Adventure. Yeah. There was a big line. And we had to wait for so long and the cold night. It was pretty cold, but you guys were all bundled up, right? Yeah. And we stood out there. They had donuts. They had music, right? And then we finally got to go inside. And we were some of the Daddy. first people to Daddy. go inside Daddy. and Daddy. check it out. Hurt donuts. Hurts donuts. Yeah, we're not going to do the joke. I taught him the joke. Anyways, we got to go inside and check out Fritz Adventures. And right now, we are going to take you inside on the opening night that we had. And we were so lucky because we got to go back the next day and spend most of the day there, right? And try out things that we couldn't do the night before. But we were there for several hours from midnight to about 2 a.m. And then you guys were very tired after that, weren't you? We headed back home. And we went right back the next morning. So let's head on over to Fritz Adventures. You guys want to tell them all about it? Yeah! yeah! We couldn't wait to get there. The building is so big. We watched them build it for so, so long. I was jumping up and down. Nice how excited I was. There was an airplane on the roof. Couldn't wait to go in it. I don't know what to do first. I'm just all. Oh. I hide from Daddy because he's a silly goose all day long. <laughs> There's so much to do. We have trees to climb on. I think there'll be tin trees. It doesn't matter. There's a place to eat and get snacks. It gives me energy. I ate so much food. Then you always eat too much food. You get a stomach ache. Mommy climbed on the ropes all the way up inside. 
high. Mommy was up so high, I was so excited to go to the bed. <laughs> There's so many people climbing around. The people are laughing and cheering. Mommy likes to do that stuff. So not Daddy and me. She keep laughing at us. Mommy got to do the zip line. Then we find the secret tunnels. We got to climb under the ground. Like in this tunnel. It can poke our head up in the ground. There are so many tunnels. It was time for Daddy to crawl in there. It's fun to watch him try. I laugh and laugh. I can stay there all day. We're not tall enough for some things. Mommy climbed up this big, big wall. It looked like a building. And she climbed a telephone pole. I'm not allowed to come climb a telephone pole. I want this big thing. Mommy's allowed. This was our best picture ever. I got me to know flying into a loose talkie walkie. It's a walkie talkie, Vanna. Whatever. We climbed across the bridge for the next part. And then we had to climb down these ropes. We went around and around. I went, I like how climb like Spider-Man. I feel like a superhero. Zan and I raced. We're both very fast. We got to go on the rope bridges. First we tried climbing on the ropes. We had to climb way up in the sun. We can see everybody from up there. They look so tiny. I can't wait to take my friends back. We should have a birthday party there. That would be awesome, Cassie. What an adventure. Adventure, right guys? It was so much fun at Fritz. Of course, it was midnight when we went over the first time, but boy was it busy and we had so much fun. It was worth standing out in the cold. And Fritz is just getting started. They have all sorts of activities that they are adding on outside. And when spring gets here, I'm sure you'll see all kinds of people climbing on the outside of the building and playing outside. So watch their website and watch Facebook for more information. Be sure to follow them, but of course, be sure to follow us us as well here with Kids Connection and the Explorers Club. You can find us on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Stay in touch. Let us know what your favorite destination is. Maybe we will go out as a family and try something new. Wouldn't that be fun? So be sure to let us know. We'd love to hear from you. My name's Christopher James. This is... Santa! This is... Cassie the Smart One and Beautiful One. Give me a break.